And now I just want to talk about file naming and the importance of file naming. So when you're um, managing research data, you need to be able to choose a logical and consistent way to name and organize your files. This is going to allow you and others to locate and use the files easily. So deciding on a, a naming convention at the start of your project is important. The same as file formats, we should, we should decide on what is the file naming convention for the data that we're going to collect for our project. So names should be consistent, they should be meaningful to you and to your colleagues, and they should, be allow, should allow you to find your files easily. So an agreed naming convention will help you provide the consistency and this will result in easy, uh, easier to find and, um, and correctly identify the files to prevent version control problems when working on files collaboratively, collaboratively sorry, and prevent errors in research. So this is another thing you need to look at when you when you're managing research data is to to come up with these these standard uh, file naming. Um, so a research uh, project should agree on the following elements of a file name, um, a vocabulary, if possible use a standard vocabulary for file names so that everyone's using a common language. For example if you're using temperature or salinity come up with a standard name for, for that. Punctuation. Decide on um, how you're going to use punctuations in your file names. Do you use spaces in file names? I would recommend never to use spaces in file names. Do you use underscores or dashes or um, capitals? These are just things that you need to discuss and agree on. Dates. It's a really good idea to have the date, include the date in a file name. And if you're going to use dates, use it in a standard format. Um, the order. Um, it's, when you're searching on files, if it's in a particular order, it's easier to find the files because they come up in, in that particular order when you're doing a search. For example, um, you might want to start the file name with the date. So that everything then when you search for it is in chronological order. So you know the, the order that the data was collected or the data file was created. Numbers. Um, if you're going to create versions of a file, you need to work out um, what your numbering system is going to be. So some general rules are, always give as much detail as possible. Use a data parameter if in your file name. Um, use numbers, use lower case. Use an underscore or a hyphen, not a space, to separate file sections. Don't use special characters. Um, but it's important if, if you're getting files from, a, from another program or another um, research project, they may already have their own file naming convention. If you're getting their data, don't rename that file. Use the, the file naming convention that, that somebody else is using. And a good example is some of the um, the satellite programs such as MODIS, they have a very uh, well-defined file name for all of their data. So when you get that data, and it's, it's also documented, so when you get that data you know what those file names mean and you shouldn't change that. So some examples of um, data file names for marine data. Um, first of all, I, I mentioned use the parameter or the object in a file name. Some examples here, things like temp, cell, rel relative humidity, air temperature, so you can abbreviate the parameter name. Um, it may be you're, you're descri uh, describing a feature, it could be a coastline, a trajectory, a depth, a height. Um, there could be more than one parameter in, a, in the file name. For example, here you've got air, temperature, relative humidity, humidity and wind velocity. Um, 
if it's an image file, you might like to add the word uh, the IMG to it so people know um, what it is. But if it's if it's a, a JPEG or a PNG, may, that may not be necessary if it's because people will know it's an image file. You can add um, grid, for example, if it's gridded data. An example there is if it's a if it's a temperature grid, then you just put temp grid. Um, if it's contours, put that in there. If it's vectors, you can also add that as well. So you have something like current vectors. For date and time, um, you can add the date and time to your to your uh, file name. Um, for for climatology, you can use uh, abbreviations for months or for annual. And I said they do not use season names. Why would you not use season names? Hmm? Depends where you are. Exactly. I mean, for me. In Australia it's summer, in Europe it's winter, so how do I know that? But if I put November, everybody knows when it is. Um, so some examples there, you can put uh, the year, you can put something like AMJ for a period of April, May, June, uh, N for annual, or you can put in the actual um, date. And this, this date here, 2005-03-15, is, is an ISO standard format for date. And there's more information there. There's a link to the ISO website. If it's a, a time interval, you can put two dates. Uh, for things like height and depth, once again, you put in the depth or the, um, or you can put in a double entry for, for a range. Location, it's always a nice idea to put in the location. You can put in where you are, whether it's a, a continent or a country or, a, or an ocean. Um, put that in there. Um, where does the data come from? What is the, what is the program or project that's being used? You can put that in there. Here's some examples of WOS, MODIS, World Ocean Atlas, for example. The provider, if the data is coming from another agency, you want to know where that's come from, you can add, add, add that to your um, the file name. So here's a couple of examples. I mean, it doesn't matter how long your file name is. It needs to be descriptive so you understand what it is. Back in the many years ago when I was a lad, the, the, you were limited to a, a, an eight character file name. There was no way that was something that was set by the operating system and it was, in, it was Microsoft and you couldn't change it. But these days you can make your file name as long as you want. So something like that, um, coastline Namibia, WVS means World Vector Shoreline and it's coming from JEBCO which is the, the, um, the bathymetric database and 250K means it's the scale of 250,000. So you'll know exactly what is in that data set. The one above it, uh, or uh, the one above it, is, is chlorophyll for January, February, March. Uh, surface, global, modus is coming from modus. Uh, Color web is is the program. In this case, it's satellite imagery. It's level three, and it's HDF. In this case, it's a it's a BZ2, which is a compressed zip file. So when you when you're discussing a, a, a project, for example, you need to, these are things you need to agree on what um, naming convention you're going to use for your files.